Hello everybody and welcome to part 2 of Soil Erosion and Conservation. So in the previous part of the chapter we looked at what was soil erosion and what were the various ways in which soil is being eroded. Now in this part of the chapter we will completely focus on how to conserve soil. Now formation of just one centimeter thick layer of soil takes about 100 years. Okay, so you can imagine just one centimeter of soil to form, it takes a hundred years, but it can all get eroded in just a few years, leaving the land barren and unfit to farm. So in the previous class, we already saw that barren is a land which is very dry where nothing can be grown. Therefore, it is very important to protect the soil from erosion. So in other words, the definition for soil conservation would be... The protection of soil against erosion is known as soil conservation. Now let us see how exactly we can achieve this soil conservation. The first method would be through afforestation. Now when you see afforestation, this is nothing but planting of trees, which is a very effective way in reducing soil erosion. And also another method is by growing grass on slopes in hilly areas which prevents erosion of soil by flowing water. If it rains on top of the hill, the water that flows down shouldn't drag all the soil with it. So when you grow grass on this slopey land, water will just flow whereas the grass will hold on to all the soil. So you can see how afforestation is very useful in preventing soil erosion, right? The second method is by soil cover. Now when you see soil cover, Generally, after a crop is harvested or before the next crop is sown, the soil remains bare. Like, let's see a picture. Now, if you see in this image, you can see that the soil is so bare, right? Now, imagine if there were very strong winds to blow here or if it starts to rain, what would happen to all the soil? It will all get carried away and there will be soil erosion that happens. So in order to prevent this, farmers generally either grow grass on their land after they have harvested their crop or they will cover that land with dried vegetation. So these are the two methods which categorize under soil cover where they are covering their soil either by putting dry vegetation or by grass. So because of these two, no soil erosion can happen. Now the next method is by shelter belts. Let's see what is shelter belts. Generally, growing hedges or trees along the edges of farmlands will act as windbreakers. Now if you see here, these are nothing but hedges. Okay, so you have one, two, three and you can see several of them here. If you take this this farmland for example it is protected so well on all four sides by hedges so what does hedges do hedges act as windbreakers okay it acts as windbreakers and helps in reducing soil erosion that is caused because of wind if it has to be shown with a diagram you can see here how wind is coming in with all force but it is being stopped by the trees which are grown in the corners either they are trees or they are hedges so because of this the wind speed is reduced all the soil and the crops that are on the other side of the tree or the hedge are protected from the strong winds so this is how these shelter belts work the next method is called as terrace or step farming which helps us in conserving soil generally along the slopes of hills farming is done by cutting steps in slopes how is it done let's look at a picture now you can see this is a slope on which steps are cut. Doesn't it look like steps? So here steps have been cut and this reduces the speed of flowing water. Now once the speed of flowing water reduces, soil erosion because of water will also reduce. So how does this exactly happen? Now if you see here, now if water is flowing from here, it will slow down because it's taking a dip. And once there is a ditch, there will be some water that collects here. The rest of it will start flowing this way. Again, it's going to drop. So it's not a continuous steep downfall because it is a step. The speed of water will reduce. And another very interesting thing about it is, though some soil may be carried from here, whatever soil is carried from one step gets deposited in the next step. 
and whatever is carried from this step will deposit in the next step so ultimately we are not losing any soil at all whatever is carried from the first step will deposit on the second step what is carried from the second step will deposit on the third step so it's not just completely flowing and leaving barren land so this is the use of step or terrace farming the next method is called as building embankments generally rivers constantly erode soil on their banks because rivers keep flowing along the banks they will take away all the soil from there so very strong embankments of soil and rock are built along the edges of the bank so you can see here these are rocks and soil which have been built in order to prevent soil erosion by water this is another example here so these embankments are called as bunds and these bunds prevent even nearby land from getting flooded so you can see these are all land settlements if there are floods these embankments will prevent the floods from suddenly entering the land so by this it is protecting the soil from erosion and protecting the nearby settlements from floods so with this we come to the end of the chapter let's do a quick recap of what we did in part 2 Under part 2 we saw soil conservation the first one we saw was afforestation the second one was soil cover then we saw what were shelter belts we spoke about step farming and how useful it was and lastly we spoke about how we could build embankments to protect our land from soil erosion due to water or due to floods With this we end this chapter in case you have any doubts please comment below and we will reply to you thank you